a head loss pressure boundary condition for hydraulic systems is a pressure boundary condition that allows you to study a component in detail while also considering a larger hydraulic system which the component is in reality part of. If you want to find out more and read a paper or download the source codes, please uh, visit the Open Foam Journal webpage. And here is also some citation information that you can use in order to cite the paper and also find the paper. The implementation is based on that Bernoulli's equation is applied to the boundary patches of the computational domain. And in the equation below, we see the uh, calculation of the static pressure at the patch. And by using Bernoulli's equation, the pressure at the patch will be equal to the static pressure far in the hydraulic system plus the hydrostatic pressure. And then the uh, friction and minor head losses are either added or subtracted, uh, depending on if it's an inflow or an outflow case. Then the kinematic pressure at the patch is subtracted, followed by that the kinematic pressure far in the hydraulic system is added. The minor losses uh, is a function of flow velocity and uh, minor loss coefficient, whereas the friction losses is a function of flow velocity, pipe length and diameter, surface roughness, and a friction loss coefficient. In the current implementation, the friction loss coefficient is solved using the implicit Kollerbrook equation. And this piece of code shows how the pressure is calculated at the patch. We can see at line three that the static pressure far in the hydraulic system is added, followed by that the hydrostatic pressure is added, and then the head losses are either added or subtracted, depending on if it's an inflow or an outflow patch. We can see at line four how the kinematic pressure at the patch is uh, subtracted, First, for an inflow case where the kinematic pressure is uh, subtracted on a face to face basis, whereas for an outflow case, the average velocity at the patch is used in order to calculate the kinematic pressure. And then uh, at line five, we see how the kinematic pressure far in the hydraulic system is added. In order to validate the implementation, an available experimental test case is used. The experimental test facility is according to the figure, and in the test facility, water enters at the steady discharge of 50 liters per second uh, at position one, and then into the upstream tank. So we will have a water level that is allowed to vary during the experimental test. And in the test, a transient valve sequence is evaluated according to the following graph. And it's the valve that is located at position five that is changing through this sequence. In order to get the effects only from the boundary condition itself, a one dimensional domain is used. So all the losses in the system are from the boundary condition itself. And here is just a summary of some of the inputs for the inlet and outlet boundary conditions. Please uh, read the paper for more detailed specification. So we can see that with this pressure boundary condition, uh, if we look at the pressure and flow rate in these two graphs, it is possible to uh, capture the main variation to a great extent with the current implementation. Of course, the pressure and the flow fluctuations cannot be uh, physically captured with this boundary condition uh, because this boundary condition is developed in a purely incompressible formulation. This boundary condition, uh, provides a simple tool in order to get the main effects from larger system, which um, the studied component is in reality part of. It also allows for uh, time varying sequences, such as a valve uh, sequence using function wine uh, variables for minor loss coefficients. And you can also uh, simulate uh, rising free surfaces. Furthermore, the boundary condition is uh, compiled directly in OnPerform using standard linking procedures, so there is no need for external libraries. Thank you very much for watching.